Uh, we have much of the setup uh, needed. Um, so if, if you have the right place to open, uh, just let me know. Well, is anybody yeah. not in the Repl team? Where are you in Clover? Uh, oh, yeah, we, we're doing both. We're doing Clover. And I'm Clover. Doing Repl too. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I have oh. both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. yeah. If you got that, if you got that even running in Repl, I'm going to really piss off. <laughs> I did tell you, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you have Replit running, um, you can go to this. Um, I have like some uh, CLIs, you can just go paste them, but we go to them. We use Clover for uh, like Hanson, just to try run these things, try to send some payments over gateways, and um, see magic for payment. Yeah, um, to start off, we, if you have uh, Clover, if you did the previous session, right, you have the right setup, but if you were not in the previous session doing uh, modules for uh, Pedimit, then uh, just go to this URL, Clover up. Was everyone here for the last round? Anyone who was not here for the last round? Right. So yeah, this is all up. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can, I can also. Okay. okay. Well, you got it. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, no, let's go to Instance. Wait, was it side of view? Oh, that was, I thought there was a different. Okay, cool. Huh. Yeah. Is that on the URL? It's not view. What was it? Instant. Slash instant. Slash. Very good. Card very good. Okay. Instant. Yeah. Yeah, so yes. Okay. That should bring our to you. Slash card maybe a different ID. Right, so cool. Okay, cool. It's gonna it's gonna change colors, pop up terminal, all that. Okay. Cool. Let it cook. Hold on, let it cook. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind interesting. interesting. <laughs> See? It's not terminal, it's so <laughs> there we go. It's cooked. Okay. Right. And then you're gonna follow. If you uh, see All right. it into Teddy Man. And then if you run just just fed dash shell. Uh, so just space fed dash shell. Just space fed dash shell. Now more cooking. But then, but then it gets really cool. Your mouse works in there. Like yes, click on the camera the side. There's a bunch of stuff on it. So there's a click there. So that's one instance. But it hasn't started yet. So we don't have Bitcoin Bees. Bitcoin Bees running. Uh, oh. So we're waiting for it to it's mining blocks and plenty of stuff. You go over to LMB. It's uh, LMB has started. And it's probably been mining. It's giving LMB some money. Yeah. It's giving all the blocks and everything. It's rash test. It's like a. Oh, yeah, it spins up all the time. Uh, okay. But the one kicker is you cannot copy and paste from anywhere. Uh, okay. So if you need to copy and paste something, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Okay, good. Cool. 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 Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. Um, I'll launch this myself. And uh, like the very first thing we see if, if you're in a shell or in, in Clover is uh, we can spin up a uh, pyramid and particularly we also spin up gateways, two of them, which connect to this pyramid instance. And so um, we can start sending payments to any lightning wallet out there, in or out of a pyramid, right? So I'll switch to pyramid and then I'll do just a shelf. This would be the first step if you wanted to boot up the pyramid instance. It's a little small. There we go. Alright, so we see this the user is a user client. So that's a user operation. And this is CLI of it. We have um, four pediment uh, servers here making a federation. We have the first gateway, which is connected to a CLN node. We have the second gateway, which is connected to an LND node. We have um, the nodes themselves, you can access them and see what's happening. Um, so we have CLN and LND, we have Bitcoin D, we have pay tests. Um, let's start doing the hack. There is um, 
there is it's very hard to copy on when you have when you're in uh, this mprox shell. So what we can do is actually uh, you know open a new shell, and uh, if you've done this, that's okay. So you can source. Binem. Uh, it's a uh, temp n t m b n. Yes. Just just t m b. Sorry. That. Oh. Oh, you, you have to be in a thirty minutes. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> This is the, the real thing is you can sort of the only guy listening. <laughs> <laughs> the talk is this way, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'll also source aliases, right? You live Don't forget to live. Uh, and, and live. You, Ooh, that is you might not there. use it, but just like, let's, let's just give it a I'm sure we'll use it. There's, uh, there's one. Like okay. Here, we'll use it here. So let's start by, if you look at, um, if you look at um, the replage, um, we'll skip most of the first one, the first 15 minutes, which was about <coughs> setting up and, and getting to Clover, right? And we can just jump straight into, um, you know, sending a payments from a federation. Um, we, to do that, you can check if you have a balance so that you can pay something. So let's say Fedimint, um, CLI, Info, right? See that we have a balance, right? I have a balance of that because I've not done anything with this Fedimint instance and my client is still, uh, you know, pristine. Um, so, what I want to do over here, what I want to do here is, like, we go stepwise, uh, and we, since we have two gateways, it can get a little confusing, and I always find it confusing, so we'll try to use one gateway and then try to replicate this with the other gateway and observe a few things about gateway in that way, right? Um, so, if you look at, uh, Let's uh, let's make a payment. Let's receive a payment through LMD gateway, right? So in your Clover, if you switch to the other shell, this gateway right here, LMD gateway, right? And we can check some things about that gateway. Uh, just try um, uh, gateway LMD. That's the shell. So see, like we just told you, it gateway LMD info. Try that. <laughs> All right. Um, it's uh, connected to the federation, so you can see the federation right there. We can we can do it, get to LND help and see what you can do. Or you can just do get to LND and see the commands possible using the CLI. You can check um, balance. You can get address deposit uh, to this federation. So depositing to a federation as a gateway is just like any other user of a federation. You, you take your Bitcoin, you do the pegging, that just ensured as before, right? Um, so let's start by creating an invoice from outside. And since we have two nodes running, we have these two nodes running. We have uh, LND and CLM, and right now, we want to use. We want to make sure we're using LMD gateway. So let's see. Let's let's do um, use LMD dash GW. Try that. Use LMD uh, underscore dash dash use LMD GW. So that just tells the user of uh, the federation like, hey, when you're making your next lightning transaction, this is the gateway that's going to serve you, and we have UI for that. Um, and they'll automatically pick a gateway to use whenever a payment is coming. Yeah. So in this instance, then let's go. Um, this is kind of because we're, we're kind of not very smart yet about like automatically choosing. Like someday we want to automatically yes. choose one based on which gateways have the best price or the best liquidity or whatever. So, yeah. so now it's just like you choose one. Yes. And so the one note here is a federation can be solved by multiple gateways, one or more. Us. Yeah. Anyone? Oh, you got Okay, cool. So then let's create an invoice uh, from CLM. Let's create an invoice um, from CLM. So you can just do uh, Lightning CLI. Okay. No, let's create an invoice. We want to receive. Let's create an invoice from our client and then go pay it using CLI. All right? So you can just do this. But it means CLI, LN invoice, amount, any amount you want. And then you can copy that invoice. So that. CLI, LN, invoice, right? Uh, let's say um, 
let's let's do temple uh, M sites, right? Okay, we have this. I'm just gonna copy that invoice, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna paste from Lightning from CLM. Okay, so oh, I just opened the new terminal. Oh, okay. Anyone there? So you have the Cool. Okay, so. So let's use our like CLM node to pay a user inside of federation to a gateway that happens to be connected to LND. Right? So, so suppose first we have a special map, uh, use use LND gateway? Yes, we use LND gateway. We're using LND gateway. So I'll say we'll copy uh, yeah, there's like two lightning clipboard this one's really hard. Yeah, this one's kind of like this. Oh, you didn't want to send the payments? Hi. Yeah, I did. Uh, quick question. Yes. Um, so, what was we ran the use LND. Uh, gateway command. Yeah. Yes. Why didn't we have to, if we're paying with C Lightning, why didn't we have to do like a use CLN gateway? Ah, uh, so use LND gateway is an alias for it, just tells the client inside the Thetamin. Oh, okay. Yeah. And since we're using the Lightning CLI and not the Thetamin CLI, we're going straight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so in this environment, you think there's like two nodes running, uh -huh. and in all cases, one of them is like the thing that connects to the Lightning network, mm -hmm. and the other one is like the rest of the Lightning network. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. only two nodes on the thread chest. Yeah. And the user on the gateway just says, well, which which one has which role? So we, we want to be able to test, like play around with both sides of yeah. each implementation. So those those aliases are just a way to like, well, let's try it with this guy being the gateway node and let's try yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you. So yeah, in the notes you can also find the UCLN gateway, you switch the roles and try to pay, make the payment. Uh, while you do that, you can also look at, uh, let's actually look at um, what happened when you watch, if you all sent the payment, anyone all successful? Sure. You just made your first uh, lightning transaction from the rest of the network into a payment. Same. Yes. Yeah. All right, what happened though? So if you look at LND, Elisha, the very last. Oh. Um, maybe we've seen more logs there. So I'll not index on that, but look at LND Gateway. Right. So LND Gateway, the very last log you see is uh, successfully processed, successfully processed intercepted HLC. So what happens there is your client, a client within a federation, you know, they create an invoice. And when they create the invoice, they say, hey, um, this is the node ID, right? This is, this is the node ID of my gateway, and this is some other information about the gateway, say, route hints. Um, and so when anyone outside pays, it comes to the gateway, the gateway intercepts it, so a HTLC interception, and then it does the processing, so it does this um, swap where it talks to the pediment, and we'll get more into the detail what the, the act of swapping actually is using some contracts. Uh, but so, yeah. so we, so I'm just catching up, we received, yes. did we see the balance chain? Oh, yes, let's do that. <laughs> let's check the balance. Right. So uh, let's check pediment. Pediment. So I, I predict the balance won't change yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to check. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you can just do this. No, it's actually not a using an eye. Oh, nice. I should have an eye for that. There you go. Oh, my balance is not checked yet, but I will to fetch. Right. We have this. Yeah. If you fetch, oh no, each one's. That's funny. Yeah, so, so fetch is just for, it, it, this CLI is stupid. It's, it's uh, being replaced. <laughs> so fetch uh, is just for eCache tokens, right? Uh, it, it, it's just for e, like, uh, eCache issuances. Like you're, you, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. But in this case, we have a contract, like a lightning contract. And we need to look if there's money in that. So it's a different thing. And there's a command, wait in this, wait that yeah. in this. Okay. And you have to paste in the uh, wait dash in voice. Yeah. And there's the, you have to paste in the, the bold 11. All right, so our bold 11 was up there. I think you still have it in your clipboard. Wait dash in voice. So now it finds it. 
can come to XAB. So now we can do fetch. There we go. And we check our balance. So just checking for again. I'm hoping to have more money than before. Right? Yeah. Well, as it is a favorite plan, you probably don't want to do this. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, so this one yeah. of the things is actually being implemented right now. It's yeah. like this new state machine based uh, client for yeah. receiving. We just implemented the send. So yeah. you can show the image. Yeah. But the receive is like being implemented right now. So. Yeah. So. Cool, cool. Um, the other thing you can do, since you're focusing it, we can check gateway balances, right? So you can do, we're using LND gateway, so gateway slash LND. Um, if you do info fast, you'll get this thing, you'll get federation ID. Just copy the federation ID, and then you can do gateway LND balance federation uh, ID. And then give you that federation ID. Right. So you see the balance. Um, actually, we should have checked this before, but the balance was about uh, two, uh, 20 million. Yeah, the balance was previously 20 million before we do it, did any transaction. But now that we received, we received an e cash on behalf of a user. So HTLC came in incoming payment. The gateways, um, the gateways e cash balance goes down because it takes whatever it receives on the other side, plus fees, and then takes uh, equivalent and submits that, that sends that to the user inside the federation. This is uh, one of the contracts we're gonna look at in detail. Okay, cool. You see your get rebalances. It's dash dash. Yeah, the double dash. All right. Um, this is one. This is one half of what a gateway does on behalf of a user today. Receive payments. The other half is a gateway also sends payments for users. So with this uh, memory of the balance of the gateway balance, let's go try to send a payment from that gateway outside. Right? We're using LND gateway, so we'll create an invoice from CLN and pay it from pay it using the payment client. Right? Okay. I have a question, just yes. it's been a long time, so you yes. ask a question here. What happened when you created the invoice with Dragon CLI? Like what, what happens, like what, uh, <coughs> you, like you said that you, the gateway sends the user yes. these tokens, right? How yes. does, I want to go into that, just now. I want to know how Hanson sending okay, cool. and receiving, Sorry. and then we go like, into the details, the, the contracts, the technical. Cool. All right, so now we want to send a payment through a gateway, through a LND gateway, right? So. If you're gonna send through, okay, send payment through LND Gateway, what we need is uh, an invoice from CLN, the CLN node. So you can maybe copy this. All right, then. I'll copy this. Uh, this is a uh, CLN invoice batch with some description. So now that I have the invoice, Ah, pay payment. Oh, pay. LN pay. Oh. Probably the first time we're seeing a contract. And at this point, let's check um, gateway balance. I think I, I think we have to pay as well, right? We have to wait in place. From gateway? I think the gateway does it automatically. Mm, okay. So let's do. You, there's also a command to check whether the select is online. That's the way the invoice will come down. Yeah. So that's a little later. Okay. Yeah, so I just need the uh, gateway LND balance, then the federation ID. There's only one federation connected, but you can be. The reason why I provide federation ID is one gateway can also solve uh, any number of federations, right? So you have to say, oh, this is the this is the federation I'm serving right now. You see the balance of bumped from what we had, what uh, the gateway had previously, uh, just under two million to this. <laughs> Where did yeah. that extra hundred millisats come from? Good question. That hundred millisats is the fee. We had put it a fee right now <laughs> of one percent or whatever percent. Yeah. A good hackathon project, we're going to come to this, is you know, um, give us back for how gateways can charge fees. Talk about that. 
All right, we kind of have done both sides um, answer. So uh, I'm ready to move into like what really happens in the hood. Um, any questions after this one? Yes, I don't want to preempt it. Something you talked about, but since we were talking earlier about swapping out kind of the yeah. lightning backend, yeah. if I'm a federation and I've had a bunch of people send and receive on lightning and they have a bunch of key cache notes that are, you know, linked to these lightning transactions, and I had to swap the back end out, like let's say, you know, my LND bolt DB exploded as it's wont to do, uh, and I had to switch over to core lightning, do those e cache notes. They're still valid, right? They're not. They're just tied to the federation. They're not tied to specific lightning state. Absolutely, yeah. So it's you, the gateway. Just you. in fact, the reference, the knowledge of whatever node you're using, mm -hmm. the implementation. That's that's irrelevant to the contract itself and to the cache. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you could always swap um, your node, right? The one you're using to actually talk to lightning. Yeah. Yeah. But there might not be balance there. So like, I might try to send an amount, but if there wasn't balance. Even though I have like enough e cash notes, it might just say like, ah, sorry, can't help you. Yeah, so these are the two halves of, um, um, as a gateway, these are the two halves of, um, <laughs> these are the two halves you have to look at, like liquidity. So you want to look at your liquidity in the federation, and you want to look at your liquidity on the Lightning Network, or whichever number of channels you have on the Lightning Network, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. If you switch to a new, if you switch to a new node, you have to roll cash, and the new node has. Channels and front payments, yeah. and you're just good to go. Sweet. You just need yeah. a lightning node that's operational. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Nice. So the next one is okay, let's look at the details of lightning gateways, right? When you send lightning payments, like we just did, right? What happens? I'm gonna look at this diagram. Uh -huh. See what size of it comes up. Um, this diagram is mostly correct, just a disclaimer, because it's one of the architecture we did a month, month back, it's changed like some degree. But um, essentially what happens when, you know, um, and a client, like on the Lightning Network, say requested a pay invoice, right? Oh, this client, this, this client, this is the same example of any client, but we're using a CLI client, right? This is within the, this client is a client of the Federation. They requested us, the gateway, to pay an invoice on their behalf, right? So what we do as a gateway is we send an instruction to a Lightning node or a Lightning API, and that instruction is with the invoice. And that, that instruction is, um, that instruction is with the invoice, like, hey, pay, pay this invoice, and on behalf, like behind that invoice is a contract, the free image, and we're going to look into that. So we pay the invoice, we receive a free image, and with that free image, we can go redeem the contract within the federation. Yeah, so there's some money in the contract. Right? Yes. Okay. The invoice and money. And the money. Pay, yeah. Pay the yeah. Um, so kind of simple, that's what happens on that end. And we will we'll, we'll be. Like the way we structure this is like we go, we peel the layers again, like we just we go lower slowly, right? Eventually we meet the modules that Justin you know, was talking about. The second half is what happens when if you wanted to receive a payment, right? Receive a payment is um, someone outside from the lightning network. Is, you know, a little bit of feedback here on the mic. Okay. If you just move it a bit apart. There you go. Nice. Better. I think it has to do with the frequency of the channel that's on Yeah. I was saying yesterday. Hmm. I was like changing it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I did. Just okay. let's just deal with it. Just step away from it. It wasn't about the better side. I said that. It's about the. He's going to laugh. He's going to laugh. Lost it. Yeah. Good. Um. For us to receive uh, a payment into a federation, we need to be connected to that federation uh, for the reasons that um, we subscribe to HLCs, we subscribe to incoming payments on the Lightning Network, and just watch um, whenever payments hit a node, like, oh, hey, this HTLC seems to be interesting for this federation. So we're going to intercept it, right? And then we're going to look for a contract in that federation, right? When we find that contract, then we say we we kind of buy it 
on one foo by it, we get. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to grab Paul. I can also, we, we have a small room with that five for Zach. Uh, we keep going. We'll grab Paul. Okay. Yeah. So these are high level diagrams of what happens. Let's go even lower then. Right. The components that make all this possible is the very first one is we have a server running somewhere, right? That server it's its sole purpose. The sole purpose of the server is to, you know, it has the gateway business logic, right? That gateway is a service, but it is also a client to a federation, right? So those two things, if a special client to a federation, just connects the federation and say, I want to give you swap services, right? And so you can see the business forming around this, and that now that that's uh, as we call that the gateway is. If you're running a gateway, you need to deploy this server somewhere. A gateway uses. It's good. That's the wrong channel. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 just the, the channel around has a lot of difference. Okay, cool. I'm not sure if you know. Alright, so um, the gateway business logic is, uh, it has, at, at the interface of it, is an API, right, a web server API. Um, that's what when we're using the CLI, that's what we're calling into, right? And so let's look at the exact definition of the API. If you're on Clover, you can actually go to Clover, go to Fediment, go to Gateway. In Clover, you can go to Gateway, you can go to LM Gateway, Sources, you can look at this file, RPC, RPC server. You can look at this file to see the Gateway API. It's a bunch of things. Um, yeah, are we together? Can I continue? Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. Oh, no, you're fine. They sort of, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so Gateway um, Web Server, right? We need info right now. We need Gateway CLI slash info, right? And what that does is it just looks at the Gateway, maybe calls on to a Fediment client, right? A Fediment client controls that is given to get more information. So there's a bunch of things here. I'll talk about the interesting ones, and then if you wanted to look more into this, um, uh, you can follow on this is, this is the source. So, Gateway, LM Gateway, RPC server. So, the one, one of the interesting ones is pay invoice, right? Pay invoice, uh, what it does when we do pay invoice is this. Oh, can search. Pay invoice. There we go. So pay invoice. Um, I'll not go exactly into how these things are tied together, but pay invoice will send um, will send a pay request through some channel to the gateway um, to the gateway logic that that will be in the library. Right? And so what it does on the client, I think the interesting thing is the contract for um, incoming payment, right? So I have that right here on the contract for incoming incoming payment is looks like this. It's um, it has it, it has a hash. It takes an encrypted preimage, right? And it has a gateway key. For us, what's what's interesting? What 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 do they, what ties the contract to the gateway is the gateway key, right? But what happens on that is the gateway, right? So the gateway, the contract is made such that um, a gateway, when it looks up, when it looks up, um, when it finds a contract, right, um, it uses the pre-made it has, 
right? It uses the pre-image to buy this. I'm a bit lost in the sequence. <laughs> so yeah, Kuri, you've interacted with incoming payments. You wanna help me explain this? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me just see your tutorial. So yeah, it's good. Cool. Right cool. You should keep talking, I'll read. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but we have just two halves of this. So, incoming contract is. Oh, let's, let's look at uh, this. Is, I'm supposed to talk about the outgoing contract for pay invoice. Pay actually is from the federation where I'm like, that's why I'm confused. But, um, I got a contract. Mm -hmm. we, a user locked, um, it's like a HTLC, a user locked, um, and some amounts in our contract. You know, say, hey, I want this contract to be paid by this gateway, the gateway key, right? And this is my key, so I can redeem this contract later, right? I put an invoice, this invoice is constructed such that it's pointing to a specific gateway, right? And so, okay. so it's pointing to a specific gateway, and the gateway is supposed to, you know, kind of buy this before uh, the time elapses. Yeah. Um, so that is from inside a federation going outside, right? What do you think about it is like an escrow contract? It's an escrow, yeah. There's some, there's some e-cash in a contract uh, that will be redeemable by anybody who can produce a pre-image to a hash. Mm -hmm. And the hash is what's inside the invoice. Mm -hmm. right? So it's just that there's e-cash mm -hmm. in it for anybody who can pay a like invoice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so anybody, we want that to be any gateway, right? <laughs> Eventually. <Sorry>. Eventually. <laughs> One of the little tricks that we can do with this though is because it's a specific gateway, we can use that gateway as a route in the invoice, right? Yes. And so now you're always able to get through it, right? That's yeah. the incoming side. Yeah. yeah. I did listen to a big issue we have with this contract, uh, in case anyone is interested in hacking on edge, right? When we create the contract, we use the full invoice, you know, full descriptions on the invoice. And the thing about Fedimint, uh, especially on the e cash side, on the, on the main side, like we try to be blinded so you have minimal information. Uh, about the users, right? But with this, you can actually over time the gateway can infer who the user is, right? So probably there's this room here to like you know minimize the, the information leak on that contract based like just from the invoice, the invoice that's there, right? Now. If you're using correlating, then you just need a description hash for, uh, yeah. for normal LED. You need a description hash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is for like the blind and the passion stuff, I think. This so that means that just has questions. So that, um, that, what you just said, so that means there's a description that's got to be plain text, and it's a core likely takes all that, caches that, and, yeah. and it makes it hidden. It's just the, the part in the invoice is the description hash. Right? Okay. And so the description is a pass. Okay. You don't have to, uh, so you don't reveal that. Yeah. You just draw through the description of the yeah. Um, any other questions about the outgoing contracts? Any any insights on how we can? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Drop L and D support and only do correlating. So you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do more. Yeah, a gateway can cancel contracts. Uh, so because it's it's um it's a free market, you know, it's it's a bit of an offer. Right? A user is saying, hey, gateway, pay this contract for the incentive of a fee, right? But a gateway can look at that contract and say, hey, uh, I I don't I think it's too small for my business or something. If for some reason it can decline, in which case uh, we like gateways should be able should cancel these things. Right. We we write the plans so that the gateway cancels it. Otherwise, uh, the contract is just signed out, and the user can claim back the funds using the gateway key. There. Yeah. Right. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So, is is there anything about this construct that, like, a lot of the assumption here is that I'm running a lightning node, but let's say I wanted like a method of last resort, and maybe if I don't have the ability to wrap the payment or the liquidity or whatever, like. I throw this over to some custodial service that takes like maybe on-chain Bitcoin and does like uh, yeah. you know uh, submarine swaps for payments or something like that. Like, is there anything about this that would preclude me from using uh, from not being able to run my own node? The answer is no, but I see a hand somewhere which is excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I scratched my head. <laughs> <laughs> That, that'd be yeah. like a really cool modification to the lightning module, right? Of that you basically like make like a moon module that just does separate swaps instead of lightning pants. Right? Like that'd actually be super cool. And I mean, well, this is one of the things I really want to do is uh, like have a gateway running on voltage of right? Mm -hmm. um, 
so I don't have to manage channels. <laughs> like the whole reason I like credit is because I hate managing channels. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. I, I think it's hard to run a lightning bug. So this yeah. is like a one that like I'm shared by a lot of people. Yeah, so it's jump bug. Uh, just to the end, to the, we, we, we skipped like one of the components of like how do you plug in any generic lighting service <laughs> or a node to a gateway like this, to, the, to this gateway logic, which deals with a contract, right? Um, your, your LND node or your CLN doesn't need to know about the contracts, right? Mm -hmm. So to do that, we have this interface called an LNRPC client, right? It's just, it just fewer specs for what we need from a lighting node or a lighting service, right? Uh, one of those things is we need the info about the node, so we can take the node uh, node ID and use it in the contract. Right? Another thing is we use routines that's purely for efficiency. Right? You know, hey, when you're going to send payment, let's maximize your probability that it succeeds. So use these routines. Right? And the other thing is we have just those two functional um, spec functional methods on on this thing. We want to be able to pay a popcorn, and we want to be able to route HLCs. This is like you know subscribe to intercepting. With this, there's actually we have um, like we have this idea that you can actually we've not implemented, but you can actually go write this against anything. You can write it against um, say mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still need a I still need a whiteboard and uh, <laughs> you copy. I need, a, <laughs> I need some more ripples in my book. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if you have time, I have another question. But if you if you need to move on, he's already yeah. over time. But there's no follow on from this, so yeah. you guys can hang out and talk to yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cody, can you bring a whiteboard real quick? I'll do that. I mean, we just take that. Rebel has drawn out eye support. So yeah. yeah. Does that marker? Like, like I can put it in my hand. Yeah. Uh, I think so. <laughs> so so I'm thinking of another scenario. I just yeah. like I like the idea of making. Lightning payments like really reliable with that event because we can do you know cool things. Yeah. Um, if I wanted to send a payment and I didn't have liquidity, I didn't have a route or anything. Is there a way that I can open a channel and do a push payment um, and like still have still have that all happen kind of like in in pretty quick succession? Um, this seems to be on the node side, like, you know, the, the whole point of a gateway is you do your magic on the node side, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And on, on this half, we do, we do the contract and we do, like, you know, just, hey, we'll, we'll push a bunch of requests to you. You are a business, you come to the federation, you want to send, you know, the 10,000 transaction mm -hmm. from the federation outside, right? Yeah. And so maybe you're an efficient, uh, like, LSP, right? Yeah. And you have your all infrastructure for doing stuff like this, opening channels, managing liquidity. Well, on this side, is just make sure you have um, sufficient uh, e-cash balance. Mm -hmm. the, the amount that there's a cap, like, you know, that cap will be limited on the, like, your trust in the federation, right? Yeah. And then you balance it with the other thing. Uh, kind, of, kind of another thing, I'm kind of just following here, but for, um, if you're using like a Bit21 URI and like the lightning payment fails, it's got the backup address in it, and that's a standard peg out. And like peg out is instant. Uh, well, not instant, but it's like one confirmation. Yeah. You don't need to wait for some confirmation. Uh, so that would be the way if you like, if the lightning payment fails, but there's a backup address, then you just do the backup address. Nice. And if like on top of the wallet, then the lightning payment. In general, like you could write a gRPC service that has like what is it, four functions, right? And behind that, you could try with your own DNO. Which might be the cheapest, and then try. And if that doesn't fail, then try with LSPs. In, like you could try a bunch of it. You could try a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. If you can't with all that. It's like center might not exist. And cool. Yeah. It seems like we're having ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So in a sense, we've actually jumped through this. We've not looked at the other contract, but I think we're over time. But we just we can just spitball here. There's and, no the app to you, so you can just. Yeah. Yeah. I think my whole for another hour. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my whole point for this workshop actually was know enough about the gateway so you can actually start playing around with it, you know, running it. We've run an instance for that was like, you know, within Clover, which is just within the Fedimit dev setup, just click that. But you can deploy this thing. So you can maybe you already have your node running. What is it going to take for you to deploy to the gateway, you know, plug into it, maybe you are an LSP or it and stuff like that. Um, so I have some hackathon ideas right, uh, <laughs> that I want to explore. Uh, whoever wants to work on this in the like next days, right? But we have some exciting things. So I'll just come back to that. So some of the hackathon ideas is we talked about this uh, implemental lightning extension for any other node implementation. Today we have CLN. 
they have a call lighting extension. You've used it right now. Uh, the other one is we have um, a plugin to LND. So with those other two, we support right now. Yeah. Yeah. Whiteboard. Whiteboard. And so you can, so Hackathon, let's try to implement this, the same thing, just yeah, your whatever, adapter into any lightning implementation out there, into any, you know, just any LSP out there, right, you know, yeah, so uh, write your own adapter there. And the other one is, you know, we have these contracts, uh, I pointed out one of the deficiencies of the upgrade payment. Um, there's a deficiency as well with the incoming contracts, and we're looking to improve them. I think there's like some improvements in the department. Yeah. But yeah, so one of the hackathons is just to improve privacy on both aspects, right? Um, the other hackathon is about port 12, which uh, I think every time, like, people look at it, right? So we have, uh, you know, it's, it's, it would be really cool to have offers in Fedimin, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so no need to create invoice every time about that. Like, just, you know, um, there is some really exciting work that needs to be done. Um, but yeah, so this links to what we need to do. There's a discussion about port 12, right? Um, hackathon ideas, um, we have uh, a gateway. Interface, right? I'll just open that. There's a gateway interface All right here. So, means get. Sorry. Yeah. This is, we have a sketch of what a web, web admin for a gateway might look like, right? So we were using the CLI and that, it's like, oh, just, I have to do, <laughs> I have to do all these things. But as a, as a gateway operator, maybe I'm already doing other things, let's say with uh, Thunder, Thunder Hub and a bunch of other things, right? How do we integrate that to a simple UI so anyone can run a gateway and serve their community, right? So this is initial work of like what, what, a, what a, a web admin for a gateway might look like. Um, you prove like functional, we have depositing and withdrawal. There's a bunch of other things we need to do here. That's much better. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. <laughs> we should stop here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if you had this and you wanted to, you, you know, someone spun up a federation, just say, hey, give me a string to connect your federation, drop it here, and suddenly you're solving that federation. Yeah. So, any other ideas? And who wants to have something the next day? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can go make more payments in Clover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. This is this is a broad. This is the contents we've kind of jumped through. Um. Maybe you want. Maybe we can spend time just diving into any one of them if you want. I guess I, one thing I was curious about is like it seems like these uh, these modules, as I've mentioned, are for specific implementations. If yeah. somebody wanted to make like an Omni Lightning module that sort of encompasses like and like it seems to me like it's a lot of effort to have to like choose which of these modules. Um, I mean, would it make more sense to kind of just have a generic Lightning adapter? module that like when we add new support for uh, LSPs and stuff like that, that the, that the interface stays the same or do you need to leverage like very specific aspects of each implementation to get the whole construct to work? Well, uh, expectation is that the lightning, the sediment lightning module, it's going to go a long way in doing all um, you know, standard lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, contract and things. Yeah. So say we have a contract, it's purely the spec of that like on the two contracts so are based on bolt eleven completely. Mm -hmm. If you want to do bolt twelve, we're expecting extensions on the existing module within that. Okay, so it's yeah. like a it's like a module. Yeah, module. It's, a, it's a module inside <laughs> Right. So inside yeah, so just make that module really good. Unless you're doing something outside, like maybe adjust into lightning, then you need a different module. When you make that module really good, then you go build a client on top of it that talks to it. And that client is what we wrap the gateway logic around. Now, wrapping gateway logic around includes making a very generic interface that we've looked at for talking to any lightning implementation out there or any LSP out there. And we have that in that part. Time. 
right? So yeah, um, primarily maybe maybe the most exciting thing right now before the next sets of workload and um, the LM URL or whatever comes, the next um, obvious step is you know plug into uh, all these things from the outside on that generic interface, the public facing interface, not on the module side. And then when the module improves, any of those plugins as well improve. One other thing that's really cool is I think if we figure out how to comfort ETAS token for like simplicity scripts, if we could actually probably remove the lighting module, we could do the, we could, yeah. we could encumber, because basically what's happening, there's an escrow that's encumbered by some contract. Mm -hmm. and if we could do that inside of ETAS token itself instead of like in a rust struct, mm -hmm. you actually wouldn't need the lighting module anymore because it's just very simple, like the uh, hash calculation stuff. Yeah. So we don't need to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good one, good question. Yeah, um, if you're interested in that, then I'll start from looking at lightning contracts. That's mm -hmm. when the points to the modules. And on the other half of like generic interface to any lightning interface, that I would be get the details, then look at um, this part, lightning connect. We have an RPC client, right? And we have um, the gRPC uh, adapter of it. It's cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Um, me and Justin are around and Cody, and we're like excited to have on things over the next days. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah.